Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and because we are getting double experience weekend, the season 12 is close, I decided to renew my guide for experience farming, the comprehensive guide since I made my last guide, some more stuff have been added, the more experience is possible more than ever before, so now I will try to go slowly over everything you can do to boost your experience. And we are here in the research center at Westec because that is a fitting place to talk about this topic. You should know that base experience per super mutant level 100, if you will have one intelligence, no buffs is around 200. So that's very little. Now, how to boost it up to get 4000. Of course, 4000 only available doing double experience. Other than that, you can get around 2300 per kill outside of double experience. Double experience not started yet. So I will be showing you all the numbers step by step, how they go up when we apply the knowledge of boosting experience in practice. So first will be your build. Whatever build you are using, you want to max out your intelligence. Amount of intelligence your character have affect how much experience you are getting from everything. It's directly boosting your experience. So more intelligence, better. Now I know for perks, 15 is the cap and you cannot add more perks. But if you really want to max out experience grinding, you should use legendary intelligence on top of 15 points already spent under intelligence. No, it will not let you add more cards, but this five extra intelligence will be reflected in your character's special stat, which means you will be getting more experience per kill. As you can see, I already have quite high intelligence. How is it possible? That's the build. You want to focus on intelligence buffs. First, those are mutations. If we go over mutations, following mutations can boost your intelligence. Egghead and herd mentality. For herd mentality to work, you will need to be on a team, but public team works, so you don't need actual friends. You just join casual public team. When you will be on casual public team, you will get additional intelligence from being on this team. So this is all free intelligence, permanent. As long as you are on a team, you have the following mutations, you have those bonuses. One important mention here, if you happen to have marsupial, like most of us, I currently removed it for experience farming, marsupial penalty is negative intelligence. So you either don't want marsupial or you want to counter it with a perk, class freak, or you want to just pop a serum. As you can see, for one hour after you pop a serum, all negative effects are suppressed. As I change all my mutations, so those new mutations comes from serums. Serums is a different topic, but you're probably aware. I hope you are aware there are serums that can give you mutations and you can buy those usually from player camps and that's the best way to obtain them. After mutations and your build itself, we go into the topic of the gear. So we cover first everything that's permanent before even talking about temporary buffs. So what is important about the gear? Need to be unyielding plus one intelligence. And you can say, what if I'm full health? Yes, you can farm intelligence. I mean, not intelligence, you can farm experience when you are full health, but you need to be aware you will be getting less experience than someone who's low health because there is no equivalent of unyielding armor for full health. So here I am, low health, unyielding armor that's giving me 
plus 3 to my intelligence per piece. And additionally this armor has on the second star plus 1 intelligence. I have all the pieces like that, which means 5 pieces, each piece giving me 4 intelligence, that's 20 intelligence just from my armor. And as you can see, those are different armor pieces, total mix. Because it's not easy to obtain them if you want to make a set of exactly the same, but for purely for experience farming, that does not matter. All you want to obtain is unyielding plus one intelligence. The two star version like this one, occasionally you will be able to just buy from player camps. Wherever I pick up item like that, I put it into my vendor for some not very high price. So whoever is farming the gear for experience farming, they can buy it. It usually sells quite fast too. So if you drop an yielding plus one intelligence of any kind, I would recommend to put it in your vendor if you don't want to use it for caps. Armor is not everything. There is as well under armor. And in that case, we are talking about flannel or any other skin for casual under armor. After making it shielded, you'll be getting free intelligence from it. The shielded plan is quite hard to obtain, but under armor itself is tradable, so you can find someone who can craft it for you. That's already a lot of extra intelligence. As you can see, without any additional buffs, my intelligence is 61. And if you are like, wait a second, it was 58 a moment ago. Yes, that's, that's night now. And we didn't cover the perks yet. After the team, your mutations, all your proper gear, we need to cover the perks. So what kind of perks? First one is Night Person. Night Person gives you extra free intelligence at night. So that's 50% of your gameplay time, you'll be getting additional intelligence. After that, under Charisma, there are two important perks. Strength in Numbers is boosting your mutations. So those mutations are giving you more benefits. Like in my case, Egghead is giving me plus eight to intelligence when without this perk, it would be giving me plus six. So it's very beneficial. Next, we have Inspirational as well requires you to be on a team. So yes, you want to always farm experience on a team. 15% extra experience just because you are on a team with this card. Next, very handy if you'll be using precious bubble heads and magazines as curator because that will double the duration. I know bubble heads and magazines are very hard to come by, so usually you should save them for double experience weekend for the next reason. All experience buffs are multiplicative, which means more you have, more benefits you are getting. The more, the better. And of course, worth to mention class freak perk, if you have marsupial mutation, this one, at least the penalty will not be so big if you have class freak. And if you have nice stack of crafted food, it's good to have good with salt. So this nice stack of crafted food buffs will last you for longer. And now before we go farther, I will start showing you what is the difference when we start adding those bonuses. Just the build, nothing else. Give me 648 experience per super mutant killed. Now the biggest buff that you can get from all the buffs those are lunch boxes. And I would recommend opening them with others as it works on everyone in the area. For this purpose in here, I will open it myself as time is of an essence. And yes, you can open multiple, maximum of four. Maximum of four lunch boxes can be stacked on top of each other, giving you a total of 100% bonus to your experience. So now we are having all those lunch boxes. Let's kill another super mutant and you will see the difference. Another super mutant, 1300 experience now. 
1300 experience with that added. Now, if we add food, what kind of food? Depend on your mutations, although for maximum possible effect, you want to be herbivore. If you are a carnivore, I will link all other videos that I have. Some of them cover carnivore stuff, so you can check those out. I will pin a comment with all the related topics if you still have questions after this video. For the purpose of this video, maximizing, we are going with herbivore. Although, don't forget, you don't need to copy everything I'm doing in here. If you miss on something, you will just have a little bit less experience. What food boosts your experience? First, brain bombs. Those are giving you 8 intelligence. I have a crafting guide for those as well on my channel, so you can figure out how to craft it. And cranberry relish, giving you 25% to your experience. Now with just those two food buffs, oh, and I should pop uh, Berry Mentats, that's additional food buff. Berry Mentats is working for a shorter duration, but is giving you a nice boost to your intelligence too. And now I'm getting almost 1800 to my experience. There is one new buff that is a new Cacola twist. For this one, we are using Cola Nut Perk, and we are checking if we get a proper roll. Under your effects, when you pop a twist, you will see what kind of special it's giving you. Yes, it's three different because of Cola Nut. We want intelligence. We're not lucky to roll it. You can try to reload it by drinking another bottle. And now we have intelligence. So that's just two intelligence. You can think not crazy much, but it all adds up. So you can see now over 1800. So I earn like 40 experience just by these two points of intelligence. And it will be doubled. All the numbers that you can see will be doubled during double experience weekend. Now let's go to the camp for a moment as there is more very important buffs. And I have my camp just outside West Tech for the purpose of getting those buffs. Now, I'm intentionally waiting with stuff like Bubblehead and Magazine at the end, because those are the most expensive and harder to get. Now I'm sleeping. Uh, that's a bed, by the way. If you are new to the game, this is a bed. After sleeping in the bed for a little bit, under a minute, I will get a well-rested buff, which is a direct experience buff, so we wait for that. Now we have well-rested buff, we can get out of our bed. And there is one more buff that we can get from our camp every time we visit. And this is mechanical derby game, plus two intelligence by just pressing a button. If you don't have the mechanical derby game, I'm quite sure you can buy it with gold bullion at the crater. So you can obtain it. So we have sleep buff and about the sleep buff, well rested for two hours, 5% experience, that's from sleeping. You need to remember when you die, this buff is lost on death. So we need to sleep again. Now, in addition to that, there is one more buff that you can get from Leo Petrov. Unfortunately, only once a day, but you can get, get additional buff for a full hour. You just say that you are in need of his services, then go, I have a Nuka Cola for you, Leo, and you need to have in your inventory Nuka Cola Cranberry. And you give him one, He's returning a favor and giving you a bonus. No, I don't want to trade with you. The bonus is Nuka Inspiration Cranberry, 5% experience. And to quickly address the topic, some of you are saying, why not just drink Nuka Cola Cranberry? That's give you 6% experience with the perk. Don't do that. The new Cacola Cranberry will override your way more powerful Cranberry Relish buff. Don't drink it, this is only to give to Leo. Not for drinking, not for consumption unless you 
absolutely have no other option. Like you have no other boost for experience, not even Crumbly Cobbler, then drink it. Now let me show you how much my experience will go up. We shoot a super mutant again. And I'm over 2K, 2024. So without even using Bubblehead or Magazine, I'm above 2K, which means when double experience weekend will start, I will be getting 4K per kill. Here important no 4K per kill is the cap. No matter your experience boost, you cannot get more than 4,000 experience per single kill. Now, if I add the Bubblehead, let's make sure that Berimentats will not expire. Bubblehead Leader. There is another Bubblehead that can give you intelligence. The Bubblehead Leader is more powerful. So that's 5% to your experience. I pop that and now I'm getting almost 2100 per kill. And the most powerful of all the rare buffs is the magazine. Live and love number five. Number three. I have five of those. Number three, not number five. Live and love number three give you 50% healing from veggies and fruits. The point is, on top of that, what's not stated here, it boosts the bonuses for the herbivores by 50%. So look at my buffs, food buffs, 7.5 intelligence, 25% experience, popping the magazine, live and laugh number three. This go up to 11.2 and 37% experience boost. Now, if I kill a super mutant, it's 2,344. That's a lot. That is huge. That is huge amount of experience. This magazine is hard to get, but as you can see, it is a significant boost to your experience. Now with this build, I can see my special intelligence of 81. And yes, it is possible to go slightly higher. You can have plus one intelligence when you pick up a holotype game, but it's not feasible because you don't know where to find them. They spawn randomly in magazine spawn locations, so you cannot plan for that. As well as there is additional bonus that Muffman can give you, but as well, you cannot plan for it. You don't know when the lighthouse event with Muffman will spawn, and it takes quite a lot of time to get 5%. When there is a seasonal event at Point Pleasant, then you know that Muffman will spawn every hour and it's more powerful Muffman, so 15% experience bonus available in there. I want to mention that, but we don't focus on it as we cannot plan for it. So we cannot plan for it, we can ignore it. What else you should know? Why are we farming West Tech? And we are farming West Tech because Super mutants inside will spawn as level 100, always as level 100, as you can see. If you are high level, of course, if you are lower level, they will spawn accordingly. And they will respawn one minute after you exit West Tech, one minute after you exit this location, the super mutants spawn back. All of them respawn, which is the fastest way to keep farming. If your super mutants are not respawning, there is very simple reason for that. You have active or inactive, but you have quest inside the West Tech that you need to finish first. When you look at this location on the map, like me, there is just West Tech marker, nothing else. If you will see additional marker like I have here, like this square, this black square, or if it's active, it's full one. If something like that is on your West Tech, regardless empty or full, you need to finish this quest that's inside the West Tech for you before super mutants can respawn. I hope it's clear. I just wanted to state it in here. Additional reason we are farming super mutants, they level 100, they do respawn, and 
those are enemies rank 3. Enemies are ranked from rank 1 to rank 4, and basically it is ranking how dangerous they are and how experience per level they will be giving. For example, if I go and kill some ghouls at Wild Spring Golf Club, there is a lot of them, but ghouls are enemies rank 2, so we are dropping a notch. Not only they are not level 100 there, but they are rank 2. If we nuke the area, ghouls will spawn as glowing ones and level 100, but still they will be rank 2. In the past, glowing ghouls have been rank 3, but due to too much fun with farming of experience, Bethesda decided to nerf them, so now I'm still fully boosted. And as you can see, I can get around 1k experience per kill. So that's like half, just because they slightly lower level and they are lower rank. So I'm losing, I'm losing on experience. That's why we are farming super mutants. And they, there are enemies rank four in the game. Yes, there are enemies rank four, but those are huge creatures. Rank four, those are huge creatures. They never appear in groups. So it's hard to farm a lot of rank 4 enemies. Example of rank 4 enemy that is quite common is a sentry bot. Other rank 4 enemies, it will be something like Grafton Monster, Scourge Beast or Scourge Beast Queen. All kinds of a bosses are rank 4 enemies. And if we could gather a lot of them in, in one spot, it will be a valid strategy. But we cannot, so this level 75 sentry bot is rank 4, so he should give me more experience than level 100 super mutant. So we shoot him down. Not head. No, oh, not torso. His weak spot is a fusion core. Now we got him. See, 4000 experience. So even without double experience weekend, sentry bot, because he's a rank 4 enemy, will give me 4,000 experience. Basically, each rank up, you double up experience. So you don't want to farm enemies rank two or rank one. You want to farm enemies rank three that are super mutants. And super mutants are only enemies rank three that appear as a group. All other rank three enemies, there is at best a bunch of them together, like Snallygusters, for example. Did I miss anything? Let me think. I hope I covered everything. If you still have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But first, please check a pinned comment where I put all my previous guides that are still up to date. This guide is just more comprehensive, more detailed, and I attempted to answer all common questions in here. And that being said, as always, Thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.